rubber, nature's most versatile raw material, begins to play its part in our lives almost from the moment we're born. It warms us, feeds us, soothes us, amuses us. And of course, it saves us from many little embarrassments. As we grow up, we learn to appreciate its many other properties. For instance, we learn that it will store and release energy. I think we can agree, therefore, that the elementary uses of natural rubber are indeed manifold, and that it might be interesting to learn a little more about it. Natural rubber comes from the bark of a tropical tree called Hevea brasiliensis. Although the Hevea brasiliensis was originally found in the Western Hemisphere, it was introduced into the East by the British government in the year 1877. In most cases, rubber plantations have been carved out of the jungle. Vast tracts of virgin forest and almost impenetrable undergrowth had to be cleared before planting could begin. And even today, the work goes on in order to make up for the ravages of war and to provide an abundance of new stock to replace the old trees as they become obsolete and uneconomic. The yield and quality of each individual tree varies considerably. In fact, a high-yielding tree may give over five times as much rubber in a single year as, say, an average tree. By selecting a high-yielding tree and grafting its buds onto seedlings of young rootstock, the total yield of a plantation can be doubled or trebled. This process is known as bud grafting and is now in common use on all progressive rubber plantations. When the bud patch has united with the root stock, the top of the stock is cut off just above the graft and the bud puts out a tender shoot. As time passes, the shoot grows upwards tall and straight and becomes in fact a young tree. On reaching maturity, that is when their girth is about 20 inches, the trees are ready for tapping. Rubber is found in latex. Latex is a milky white liquid which is contained in a large number of vertical tubes in the inner bark of the tree. When the tree is tapped, that is when the bark is cut, the latex flows from the tubes along the downward slanting cut into a collecting cup at the base of the tree. The trees are usually tapped every other day, as the latex ceases to flow after a time and the cut has to be reopened. When the flow of latex has ceased and before the tree is retapped, the contents of the cups are collected from each tree. The average rubber estate contains many thousands of trees, which are carefully tended by native workers. On the Malayan plantations, the workers are mainly composed of Tamils from the southern districts of India and Malays and Chinese. They bring their buckets containing the latex to convenient collecting points on the estate, where tankers are waiting to take it to the factory. The yield of each group of trees is noted and samples are taken for laboratory analysis after which the latex is poured into the tanks for its journey to the factory.
natural rubber is exported from the East in three main forms. The greater part being in the form of smoked sheet, which blended later with other compounds is the basic raw material for most manufactured rubber products. Considerable quantities of crepe rubber are also exported in a finished and semi-finished state, ready for cutting into soles and heels and other shapes. Many processes, such as the manufacture of surgical gloves and rubberized fabrics, require the raw material in liquid form. And for this purpose, large quantities of concentrated latex are shipped from the East. In the case of concentrated liquid latex, after the latex has been collected from the trees, it is brought from the plantation to the local factory, where it is stored in large tanks until required for the concentrating process. It is then allowed to flow by gravity to a battery of centrifuges, which separate the water content, leaving a pure concentrated latex cream, which can be shipped in bulk form. In the case of smoked sheet, the latex on arrival from the plantation is poured from the tankers through a series of filters into bulk storage tanks, where it is diluted with water to the density required for subsequent processing. Samples of the latex are subjected to quality, purity and hydrometric tests in the laboratory. And when approved, the latex is passed through more filters into long, shallow tanks. Acid is now added to the latex in order to coagulate it into a solid form. After a number of hours, the latex sets into a junket-like mass which is called coagulum. By the use of metal separators placed in the tank before the latex sets, the coagulum forms into a thick, continuous strip. The strip is fed from the tank into a trough, which carries it along to the sheet rolling mill. Here, the junket-like coagulum passes through a series of rollers, which squeeze out the water and compress the coagulum into a thin, continuous strip of dough-like consistency. As it leaves the rollers, the strip of coagulum is cut into sheets. To give the coagulum the properties of rubber, it must now be dried and cured in an oven. So the sheets of white coagulum are hung on racks on special trolleys, which are pushed into smoke ovens heated by wood fires, where the sheets remain for some days. When the sheets emerge from the smoke ovens after the required curing period, they have become tough and elastic. They are now light brown in color and are almost transparent. The sheets have in fact become rubber as we know it. Every sheet is carefully inspected and any blemishes are removed. The sheets are then graded and sorted, ready for packing and dispatch. In order to reduce their bulk for shipping purposes and to save unnecessary freight charges on packing materials, the smoked sheet is compressed into square bales, and the bales are themselves wrapped in smoked sheet. In the case of crepe rubber, as soon as the raw latex has been coagulated, it is passed through a series of heavy rolling machines. These rolling machines not only squeeze out the water and compress the latex, but impart at the same time the familiar crepe appearance which is due to the upper and lower rollers of each machine running at a different speed. After rolling, the raw crepe is wound onto bobbins, ready for maturing. The light color of crepe rubber is due to the addition of chemicals and drying by air, instead of smoking by wood fire. In the manufacture of sole crepe, after drying, a specified number of wafer-thin layers of crepe are placed together in batches. These batches are preheated on warming tables and are then passed through a set of laminating rolls which seal the layers together into one thick sheet of crepe. Hundreds of thousands of tons of smoked sheet, crepe rubber and concentrated latex are being shipped to all parts of the world from Malaya and the East. <laughs> Now
natural rubber is the basic raw material of one of Britain's largest industries, manufacturing an enormous variety of products of widely different purpose and character. For most of these products, the early stages of processing are the same. The bales of raw rubber are cut up into pieces of manageable size, and the pieces are fed into a mixing machine, where they are finely shredded and what is called masticated. At this stage, special compounds are added to the rubber so as to give the final product the particular mechanical properties required. Thus, one can obtain rubber-based materials as diverse as the hardest ebonite or the softest sponge. After the compounding process, the rubber mixture is ready to be formed and shaped into the required article. It is still in a soft and plastic state. And in order to give it permanent shape and the required physical properties, the mixture must be cured by what is known as vulcanizing. This is brought about by a combination of heat and pressure. Natural rubber is the most versatile of all industrial materials. It can be rolled into sheets. It can be extruded into sections and tubes of all kinds. Rubber can be pressed and molded to any shape or size. It can be bonded to metal or to wood. Rubber latex can be aerated to form cushions, seats and mattresses. Rubber flooring is hygienic, quiet, lasting and attractive. Rubber provides sure insulation against electricity and protection from dangerous chemicals. Rubber can be used as of physical shock. As a result of unceasing research and plantation development in Malaya and the East, the yield of the rubber tree shows a continuous improvement both in quantity and quality. Wherever problems of vibration or the absorption of energy arise, Natural rubber compounds will provide the answer. The rubber tree is a true servant of mankind. It's a bountiful provider of an abundant and economic source of raw material for an ever-widening variety of products, both for industry and for the home. Rubber will always be equal to any demand, no matter how